Hello everyone, my name is Asim Rifai. I'm a medical doctor who graduated from the University of Jordan and I'm currently an intern there locally. Uh, today I'm going to tell you about my UCMLE Step 2 experience. Uh, as you can learn from the title, I scored 283, uh, which was unbelievable uh, even to me. And uh, today I'm going to share uh, my experience, uh, which I believe I stumbled upon and it's not something that I planned to. Uh, there was luck uh, in the mix that led me to learn what I'm going to share with you today and I hope that um, you take each word that I tell you as a sincere advice um, and it really helps you in your journey. Uh, this video is going to be divided into general advices and resources. Much of the talk that I'm going to be saying in the resources will be uh, found in many videos online. Uh, but I hope that the general advices um, that I'm going to deliver, which I learned from my journey, are going to be the most helpful for you. So let's get started. Uh, number one, I'm going to talk about um, finding your own pace and time schedule. Something that's very common among IMGs and also um, USMDs and all people around the world who take this exam is that they will be looking for a lot of advice. And I believe that sometimes can be hurtful. So. For example, you might see that someone took the exam and achieved to get a phenomenal score um, while only studying for a few months, maybe in the range of three to six, okay? And you go on and think that you can do uh, a good thing doing the same, you could achieve a good mark, and sometimes this doesn't happen. So you have to trust your own pace. Sometimes people can't uh, take more than one block per day. Like when they are starting, they can't take more than one block per day. And I have seen these people, and if, if they do the right strategy, take their time, they will manage to get a great score. And for example, for me, I managed to uh, complete two blocks per day when I first started. And toward my second read, I was able to upgrade to three blocks per day. Nevertheless, um, you have to find your own pace and speed. Don't look into what other people are capable of doing. Trust yourself and uh, do what you are doing consistently and the results will be there. My second advice is do not set a up target, set a low target. Uh, like keep in mind, I don't want to get a score lower than 240. Okay, this is just an example. And if you put that target, make sure that none of your assessments go beyond that, below that. And if you find that the majority of your assessments are below that target, my advice is to postpone your exam, take more time and see where you are making mistakes and try to improve it. Um, and what I mean by an upper target, uh, do not limit yourself, like don't say I want to get a 250 score and that's it. Uh, and this most applies for people who are doing this exam as medical students or as IMGs who have some time. Uh, however, if you are um, in a situation where you have limited time, of course, keep in mind the score that you want and aim for it, okay? My third advice is to work on your fundamentals. I have seen few people, uh, but they are there, uh, who happen to have um, a not very fluent English, especially among IMGs. That's absolutely fine. You, you have your own beautiful native language. Uh, nevertheless, I think that um, before indulging into the 4,000 plus questions of your world and their explanations, taking some time to work on your language uh, could be a good thing to remove that barrier and ease your studying. Um, so that's my best advice for anyone that finds difficulty. Uh, like, if you don't know where you stand, pick up a random new world question and try to read it. Read the options, read the explanation. If you find yourself not understanding a lot, then you probably need to work on your English a bit. And this will help you uh, through your journey in the future. My fourth advice is to not do the pre-dedicated period. I didn't do it. I don't know what people exactly do in their dedicated period, but I have seen some examples and that's what I mean by not doing it. Um, it's doing few days per week or not doing it consistently on a daily basis. I don't recommend that. You will burn out. Um, I have heard of people who have been studying for step one exam for plus one year and then they do their dedicated in one month. This is just a lot. It will burn you. You have another exam to do. and. From my own experience, I started uh, with um, two blocks per day, every day. Um, weekends, um, every possible day I could study on, I studied and did uh, you all the blocks. 
So that's my advice for anyone uh, who is taking the exam. Just determine when you are going to start and make it a dedicated uh, beginning uh, without interruptions uh, because you are because you will forget what you learn. Like for example, if you finish your step two exam and, and you go on to become a great Obgani resident, okay? You will forget about the hypertension and uh, the hypertensive emergencies and maybe you will forget about um, cystic fibrosis in pediatrics. You will forget about these cases. So you need to keep it like that, that number of days that, you, that uh, you will interrupt your study is going to impact you. Like just keep it compacted, keep it all together and um, never have a space between um, your exam uh, and your studying. Like just study, 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 take your exam, okay? That's my best advice. Lastly, on the general advices, never complicate your resources. We will go now to talk about the resources, but never complicate it. Not more than two, that's my advice. You will find yourself, and not just for the East Mini Step 2 exam, any exam in the world, any exam, in your medical school, in your life, um, in a non-medical specialty, the more the resources, the more likely that you will be um, not adherent to these resources and not consistent. And that's very normal because you will feel lost. Now I will talk about my resources. I started with UWorld, uh, as I have already mentioned. I started with two blocks per day and I kept uh, doing two blocks per day for my first read. Uh, my first read took me about three months. Uh, my plan was to have an extra three months after my first read where I will do a second read, I will do assessments, uh, including uh, CMS and NBMEs, and then I'm going to do the real deal. Um, this never manifested because of the end health transition and uh, a mistake in my name uh, into the website. Uh, and I was really mad that this happened. I was getting burned out six months, nonstop, every day studying. But I believe that this is what helped me to get a good score or a phenomenal score or a great score, as many people title it, but I believe it's not something that I really um, was going to be able to get if I took my exam on uh, six months. Uh, I was forced to take it at a nine months, so I had nine months of every day studying, solving questions, and only relying on two resources, UWorld and Anki. And I believe that in your world, I approximately reached a third, fourth read, like some questions passed in front of me four times and some of them three times. And most importantly, I was hunting my incorrect answers. Like whenever a question was incorrect, I made an Anki note to it. And I encourage you, beyond your first read, forget about the first read, you will make a lot of mistakes. But after that, like even if you will do only two reads, that's fine. Uh, during my second read, I did assessments and I was scoring in the 260s. Uh, so I was really ready to get a good score. Uh, at least I hope I was. And um, what I found myself doing in my second read, uh, that helped me a lot. Whenever I make a mistake, I go on and make an Anki note for it. Just to have it there to be repeatedly shown in front of me. And when I was forced to take a, a extra time for my exam, I kept uh, repeating these Anki cards and uh, at the same time doing you world it, th this thing and I'm sorry because I I'm lost in words because I want to describe it for you I reached a stage where I could read a question and from the first two lines just from my complaint and some suggestive feature I could know the pattern they are asking about and this is not something that was present in the first read definitely was in the second read but not completely uh, but once you go further into repetition, which is very hard, it's very hard, it's not something easy. Um, and that's something I want to touch on uh, at the end. So um, keep on repeating. That's my advice. If you do two blocks per day, I think you might be able in the period of eight months or nine months to do almost four reads. Is the fourth necessary? No. I believe if you do three, that's a great job. And um, obviously doing it consistently, not doing a read... Uh, in the previous year and now doing it again, I don't believe this helps, okay? Um, and for the Anki, uh, I did Anking. Um, I like Anki, I personally recommend it. I know some people don't. If it's going to waste your time and replace your actual U-World solving, don't do it. That's my advice. Uh, I have friends who took the exam and they scored well without doing uh, too much Anki. Uh, so it's not going to be your primary source, okay? 
uh, will it add to you? It will definitely add. It will make your uh, experience with your world easier. That's something uh, for sure. Uh, but nevertheless, never let it be your primary source. If you find yourself taking so much time on Anki uh, that it's beating down on your U world, uh, this is going to hurt you. Uh, so keep your focus on your world. And if you manage to do two hours of Anki per day, that would be great. Okay. And also don't be so uh, judgmental of yourself. Like if you skip one day in Anki and the number of reviews increase, you shouldn't hunt that perfect zero. It's not the target. Okay. Uh, and um, what else do we have? Okay, what sources uh, I don't recommend using. I know other people would recommend it, but Ampus QBank. The questions are very tricky in a way that the exam is yet uh, to manifest, and I hope it doesn't. It's very tricky. They will give you, um, and I understand why they want you to learn, uh, but you can learn using U World uh, in a larger number of questions without uh, this mix, and your world will be closer to your exam than uh, AMPAS. For assessments, you have obviously the CMS and NBMEs. I recommend doing the NBMEs, you have to do them. For CMS forms, uh, if you have a lot of time, do them. Uh, if you have sufficient time and you want to uh, take uh, a good time in your preparation, do it. Nevertheless, will it add to your score? I don't believe it will. Like from my personal experience, I didn't complete them. And I believe that from your world and Anki, I got my score. Um, yeah. Uh, lastly, the your world self assessments, obviously do them. I didn't do number three because it was brand new and um, I just relied on doing uh, number one uh, and two. Last thing, uh, I want to touch on a few things that uh, I believe are um, characters that if you develop within yourself, and this is for the medical students who are young, for the medical students who are in their first year or second year listening to this. Try during your medical school, when you are going through these subjects, these big ones, the biochemistry, um, the microbiologies, you try to develop your agility and the stamina. Study for long hours. This will help you. If you are brand new to studying for long hours when you are embarking on your step two journey, it's going to be difficult. Uh, so try to establish this try to establish your stamina and agility and the ability to sit down for hours uh, working and studying because this will be very helpful once you start uh, doing uh, your world. Uh, something else is uh, being uh, humble during your experience. Uh, do not um, underestimate the exam but also do not overestimate it. Uh, do not be so scared of it and fearful that uh, you can't sleep and uh, your life is um, so miserable, but also do not underestimate it. Uh, if you are good, like if you find yourself solving too many questions, do not underestimate it and take it in a short period. Uh, this might fire back. And from what I read a lot of times and read it, it fired back on a lot of people. So don't underestimate or overestimate the exam. Find your own pace again and work on it. Uh, lastly, uh, you need to develop resilience uh, and what I mean by this, and it's not something difficult to develop, uh, do not be crashed by a bad assessment. Do not feel bad um, about your first read percentage. Uh, do not feel like it's the end of the world. Um, do not be depressed that you are not going to study tomorrow, which is the most important thing, right? We want to be consistent. So try to um, navigate through the difficulties. It's a difficult thing. It's a difficult journey, and it will take months of your life. So try to take these hits with, um, I don't know how to express it best in English, but in cold blood, in a cold blooded way. Don't care that much when you feel that things are not going okay or your scores are not phenomenal. Don't let it affect your mentality and uh, your attitude. There is always a way to become better. If you made 20 mistakes in a, a block, the next time you study it and after you read your incorrect explanations, maybe you will get 25 right and um, then you can get 30. So take your own pace and I think you will be comfortable with that. Uh, lastly, uh, I would like to acknowledge my colleagues. Uh, there are many people who I seek no uh, knowledge, I seek advices from and um, they, it has been really helpful uh, to have them around me and also the ones who shared this journey with me and um, we were really uh, studying every day together. Uh, and also um, many on YouTube, 
uh, who have been really helpful. I encourage you to listen to other people. Also take my advice, listen to other people's advice and try to uh, plan your USMLE Step 2 journey before uh, starting it. Um, and yeah, uh, that was everything I had in mind. Uh, a lot of improvising. I really wanted to deliver um, what I really had in mind and what really was my experience to you. Uh, feel free to give any comments, uh, any questions that you have. And um, I recommend that you subscribe to my channel. I will try to post more about uh, the STEP exams uh, and also on research. Um, and I hope this content is helpful for all the medical students and MDs around the world. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, see you in the next one.